Hey friends, welcome. It's been a while, hasn't it? I'm Tiffany Mercure and this is Raining Rivers where we just go with God's flow. And I'm just going to jump right in so that I don't waste time. But So it was brought to my attention today that the solstice is tomorrow because a neighbor was passing out flyers saying that, you know, hey, come to our solstice party tomorrow. My husband brings in the flyer and he said, hey, uh, you know, the neighbor was outside and so on and so forth. And when he tells me what she gave him, I look at it and I knew right away because I was at the sink cleaning a pot, you know, that I just made dinner with. And while I was standing there cleaning the pot, Holy Spirit whispered to me, witchcraft. There are some of us who need to be reminded that these things, sorcery, magic, if it's in your home at all, I want you to take a look around. Get rid of forms of magic in your home. If you're under some kind of oppression, meaning if you've got an unexplained illness, and I'm going to tell you a testimony in a minute, but my own testimony, but unexplained illness, or even if your children are going through things that you can't explain, like maybe they're sort of walking around sullen or solemn, or they just don't have joy. I want you to just sit, you know, with Jesus and take a look around at your surroundings or circumstances. Is there anything in your life that you can't explain is giving you some type of oppression? From scripture, God warns against all forms of witchcraft, sorcery, magic, necromancers, like who are people who speak to the dead, mediums, and this is where I want to get to my testimony. And if my college roommate is watching this, I'm sorry, like, I'm not going to put her on blast and tell you who she is, but because I didn't ask her if I could do that. <laughs> but we went to see a medium when I was in college, and I had to trace back to the point in my life when these unexplained illnesses started happening. There was a lot of them, I'm telling you, even when I first moved to Georgia, and I lived with my sister Jess, um, you know, I lived with her a short amount of time, but I think it was before I lived with her. Um, I had this illness and her husband took me to the hospital and everything. And they were so great. They took care of me, but it was unexplained. It was like, it just came on suddenly, but that was one of just a list, a long list of illnesses I had. And I had to trace back. And this wasn't until recently. I had to trace back into my history. When did these illnesses start happening? Cause I'm fine now, but, um, it was a long, it was like a span of 10 years or maybe more that illness after illness. And I was just constantly bouncing back. I traced it back and I know it was Holy Spirit impressing it on my heart. You went to visit that medium. Now see what I mentioned before in a previous video, I gave my life to Jesus like officially, like really, I wanted his faith, not my own. I wanted to take on this life, like take on this life with meaning, you know, and that was at the age of 22. A little bit later on is when I visited a medium. So like I've said previously, to whom much is given, much is required. So once you have this infilling of Jesus's life in you, he calls you to scripture. And I knew so many times he would call me to scripture, but I was like, I'm too busy. I'm too busy. Got to do schoolwork. Got to go to work. I'm working full time, school full time. Like I made excuses and slowly drifted away from the path that he was leading me on. And in that slowly drifting away, I, I sought things for fun is what I said, but it opened doors in my life that should never have been opened. One of those doors was I went to visit a medium who would show up at my workplace. And every, everyone thought it was just this fun thing. God takes it very seriously. I'm telling you, he wants you to consult no one but him. I mean, yeah, he'll give you wise counsel in your life, right? Like people who have wisdom, that they, they carry wisdom of the Holy Spirit. But I'm telling you, he doesn't want you to consult darkness in any way. If you've got a Ouija board in your house, go ahead and throw it out. Throw it away. There are doors, just like it says, and I think Psalm 24, we ourselves, he calls us gates. He calls us gates. Our eyes are gates. Our ears are gates. Our mouths are gates. The mind is a gate. So he's saying, I want you to be gates to heaven, gates of heaven. Receive what he wants you to download so that what you give out to the world and your, the people you love is of his goodness, of heavenly quality, of light, not darkness. So if your gates, your eyes, your ears, or um, anything about you is welcoming the kingdom of darkness, it's going to manifest in your life. You may have unexplained illnesses. So 
I had to break ties with what I agreed with by going to see that medium. Anyone watching right now, if you have any illnesses in your life or your children, anyone in your household, if you've gone to see a medium or they have, you've got to break the ties. You have to say, I no longer, pray with me now. Pray with me now. Say, Lord Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. And I agree with all things of heaven. I break ties. I divorce my heart, my spirit, my soul from anything having to do with the occult and the darkness. I break all ties with it in the name of Jesus, broken off. In Jesus' name, I completely denounce all witchcraft, renounce, denounce, condemn. Tell it, get out. Get out of my house. Get out of my life. Get out of my heart. Get out of my mind. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Jesus, I ask you, and through your Holy Spirit, set all your people free. Set all our friends free who are watching this. No more spirit of witchcraft. No, no more agreeing with the occult in their household or in their mind or in their heart. All for your glory, Jesus. Let peace wash over them like a river right now. Let peace come to their hearts and to their minds. I thank you so much, Holy Spirit, for the grace that you just, you just give in abundance for your people to follow you and follow you in wholeness and holiness in righteousness and purity in Jesus name. Do you feel that friend? That's the spirit of the Lord coming to you now. He loves you. Rest in his peace. I got this vision of a butterfly, blue and black, and it was really beautiful. And in my dream, or this vision really, I knew that it represented the Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit usually is represented as far as colors, he's represented as blue to me and probably to you too in dreams. So this butterfly flew up into the air and ate this thing that looked like a cross between a locust and a grasshopper. And if you look in scripture, I think, you know, books like Job and Jeremiah and, um, you know, judges, I think they name like the plague of the locusts, especially they're named and um, so the butterfly ate this locust that was like a cross between a locust and a grasshopper in midair. And there were all these spectators watching. That's what I'm saying. You're, you represent the butterfly. You believer in Jesus. You represent the butterfly. Eat up everything dark. And how do you eat up everything dark that seeks to scare you or induce fear? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's how. how. Back to the butterfly represents resurrection and hope and grace and letting go, letting go of the old nature. You see where I'm going? He's saying, we, I'm, I'm going to draw the line here. Like you have to let go. Some things may have been permissible, but they're no longer going to be. You're going to feel tension in your heart. He's saying, I'm telling you, let go of those things. You need to eat up the ugly with the beautiful. Jesus is the beautiful. Holy Spirit is the beautiful. And notice also, this locust slash grasshopper thing that I saw in my vision, it was one. In the Bible, when these things come in, you know, in numbers, in great numbers, they're greatly destructive. They take out whole crops, right? They're greatly destructive. It, this one thing was by itself. Bit by bit or one circumstance by one circumstance, the beautiful will eat up the ugly and turn it into a testimony, okay? So bit by bit, piece by piece, circumstance by circumstance, example by example, dream by dream, whatever it is, let him show you how to let the beautiful in you eat up the ugly and use it for fuel as your testimony, okay? So the locust grasshopper thing wasn't in great numbers and the spectators were all like, <gasps> they gasped when this butterfly ate this ugly thing because it was unsuspecting. It was, it's unsuspecting that this delicate looking butterfly would go up and show such strength, such strength and courage and overcome that darkness just like that. Be that butterfly, be that butterfly, be that sign of hope for so many people watching that sign of hope and letting go and just a revelation life, you know, like it says in Romans 12 2, this is what it represents, right? Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So like I said, you know, darkness will not overcome. You are a gate, be a gate unto heaven, not a gate for anything wicked to torment you or come into your life and usurp the beauty, the peace, the hope that God is trying to cultivate in your heart, okay? And I pray that over you, over your hearts and your homes, that you'll just let the peace of Christ reside there, that you'll listen to, to his urging for you to let go, let go, and fly above everything that would keep to, 
that would seek to hold you down. Be strong, be strong in the Lord and trust him. Everything good comes from him. And let your light shine. Don't be ashamed. This beautiful light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This beautiful light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This beautiful light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus is the light, and I'm going to let him shine. Jesus is the light, and I'm going to let him shine. Jesus is the light, and I'm going to let him shine, let him shine, let him shine, let him shine.